Hey guys, Floor here, and I wanted to make a video regarding the recent question that I started asking myself. Is attack power better than elemental bonus damage? And if so, at what point? Or is elemental bonus damage better? And the reason I asked myself this question is because when you hit AR40 and you start actually doing some domains, because they drop five stars, a lot of the sets don't have anything to do with attack. They actually all have to do with their elemental bonus damages and whatnot. So um, what I wanted to check is um, for what point um, is that actually better or not? Okay, and specifically, what I'm going to ask myself is the attack percent, i.e. this green number that adds on top of my baseline attack. Is this going to be better? How much percentage is going to need to outscale the overall elemental damage bonus? And specifically, how does elemental damage bonus work? Um, so is it just multiplicative? Is it Does it apply on top of all of your attack and then it adds on top of that? Or does... Uh, how does attack scale? Is it is it a linear function? Does it plateau at any point? So what I did is I took Fischl and we went out into the field with my Fischl who's level 70. She has uh, a baseline attack of 576. Okay, and I just summoned Oz and we did some attacks on some consistent hilly trolls at level 69. And we just determined what um, the damage was for various levels of attack so that we can prove at which point, um, you know, is, is attack scaling linearly for el elemental damage. And then I also added a cup to see how electro bonus damage works. And then we did a comparison using some math and some MATLAB. So let's actually jump into that script right now. So here I've written up a nice little MATLAB script. <laughs> I, maybe a little overkill um, to program it using <laughs> MATLAB. I'm an experimental fluid dynamicist doing my masters, so this is second nature to me. I really like doing this sort of thing, so maybe it's overkill for you, but for me it's fun. Uh, so let's dive into it, and I'll show you how I get to this graph. So if you're just here for the conclusion, well, I'll start by saying um, the conclusion of my, of my study was um, at larger values, um, elemental damage, elemental bonus damage, um, will always be better. So your baseline attack, it's a wash. So it's basically the same. Okay, so as you increase your stats, even by a little bit, elemental damage is going to become better always. So it's strictly better always for an elemental damage user. Okay, that's the conclusion I've come to, and we're going to step by step, and I'll show you the data, I'll show you the evidence, and then, um, I mean, you guys can make your own conclusions. I used Fischl for my test. Okay, so my official has a baseline attack of 576 uh, as her base attack, 576. So that's why my baseline attack is 576. And in the video, you'll see that I did a couple tests at different attack powers. So I did one at 1448 and got 986 damage. 986, 986, 986. Then I did another one at 1429 and got 973 auto attack damage. 973 was the number. And then I did an, another test at 1163 and got 70, 792 damage on like adding 19 attack. Now we're going to test for like 200 attack or something like crazy. 792, 792, 792, 1267, 792, 1267, 792. Okay. I, d I selected three points, and the reason why I wanted to do this is I needed to confirm that elemental damage, like odds is elemental damage, for instance, scales linearly with attack. Because if I could do that, then I can just make a function that'll be valid across all attack powers, which you'll see here shortly. And then I did a third... Um, instance where I equipped um, a cup that had 6.3% uh, elemental electrical damage bonus and I did that test um, and it gave me 951. The attack is now 1314. Oh my god, badass. Okay, 951, 951, 1580, 951, 1580, 1580. Okay, so now what I have to do is I have to account for the attack loss <laughs> and then add the bonus to see if it's linearly added, if it's literally 1.063. Okay, using these data points, I was then able to determine the gradient of my attack value and prove that it was actually indeed linear. 
So I normalized all my units to elemental damage per attack percent. Okay, by taking the difference of these values of 1448, 1429, and then converting it to an attack percent. And then I was able to determine what my value is here. So what I actually get is 3.9 elemental damage per percentage of attack. Okay, and then when I did this for the remaining tests, I actually found that all of them uh, were very similar, 94, 92, 992. Okay, so they were all about 392. So what I ended up doing is I took a mean value of these three, so the average, which is about 3.9273. Okay, so what all this says is if I convert this to a raw attack, is that I'm actually getting 68% of my raw attack value being converted to elemental damage. So at a baseline of 576, which is this black line, I'm actually getting um, less than 576 attack. Okay, I'm get actually getting 68% of it. All right, that's what I'm getting. I did that for all three, so basically I know for a fact that this is linear scaling. So ele elemental damage scales linearly, okay? I was able to generate a few functions um, based off of various elemental bonus values for the same uh, for various attack values. And what we can see is at zero percent elemental bonus, the the blue curve and the dotted curve, which is our attack baseline function that I just solved for, are the same. Okay, and that as we increase our elemental bonus we're actually increasing our elemental damage, always, strictly always, it's strictly always higher. Um, the interesting case is when those values are not one-to-one. -one. Okay, so what I ended up doing is I, I plotted this here, and the values that, I, that you're seeing is, I took my baseline test at 576, okay, and what I did was I added 18% on it. And then I looked at the two overall elemental damages. The blue curve is the 15 is 15 percent um, on top of the on top of the baseline curve. So that is my that that's what I would get at all attack values if I just had a 15 percent elemental bonus. Okay, so at the very beginning, what you can see is 452 and 463 attacks a little bit ahead, but it's essentially a wash. We're talking about 11 attack. It's essentially a wash. So at the start. At baseline attack, so if I had no additional attack on my official here, if I just had 576 plus zero, they would be about equivalent. And because they're both linear functions, what's going to end up happening is they're going to diverge, and that the difference between this divergence that you see between these two lines is increasing. So the, the difference between them increases over time. Okay, and the the starting point is when they're um, about equal. So what this tells me, qualitatively speaking, is elemental damage, the 15% versus 18% is always better f for that use case. To see how much better, I actually just used a more interesting case when you know, you're AR40, your units are probably in the 1,000 to 2,000 mark. So I just took the baseline, let's just say 1,000. You know, if you're gonna hit AR40, odds are a lot of your elemental side characters are at about 1,000 attack power. And what I did was, okay, if you're going to throw one of these two pieces on them, well, which one, which one will be better and how much better? Okay. And at a thousand attack, what you can see is if you, if you s sub in a glad piece, strictly just the two set bonus, 18% would actually result in lower bonus damage in the thundering set for official, for instance, at about 4.2% difference. So if you take the difference, if you, if you take the, if you normalize these two, you're actually going to see that 784 is 4.2% larger um, than 752, which means that, which means elemental bonus is l better than attack percent. Okay. And that is because inherently in this math, the attack percent, the attack percent only scales off of your baseline attack. Whereas elemental damage scales off of the overall value. So let's say I had attack of 1314 and I said 68% of it is going to be equal to uh, the elemental damage, 1314, I actually get 894-ish. That's what my attack should be. But because I had 6.3% uh, electro bonus damage from a cup I used, 893 times 6, uh, 1.063 
gives me 949, so about 950, and that's what the in-game value was. So the 951 was the in-game value that you saw. So mathematically speaking, under this function and adding, you know, I've basically proved that yes, indeed, elemental bonus damage applies to the cumulative value of your damage, whereas the attack scaling only occurs on your baseline. And this is how it'll deviate in time as you increase your attack, your attack power. So attack power is going to scale linear, linearly, whereas if you add elemental damage, it will, it will increase, your, your differential increases are actually nonlinear. So they will continuously increase as you increase your attack power. So it's a really, really good idea um, to acquire some elemental damage. And you know, you might be asking me at this point, it's like, Gloria, this is too much math, I didn't want to follow your MATLAB code. What's the point of this? The point of this is if you're using an elemental unit like Fischl or Venti or Shang as supports, they only use elemental damage. Like you drop the E and then you swap to your DPS like I do. Like my DPS is Razor. I drop my E and then I, I slip to Razor. Characters like that will benefit way more from elemental damage than they would attack percent. And this comes into play on your cup. So on your cup, you're going to want to grab something that gives you bonus damage rather than attack percent. So for instance, for Fischl, I've actually equipped her an off piece that gives electro bonus damage versus let's say um, attack percent. Because this at one to one definitely outscales attack. And it outscales it actually for quite a bit. You would probably need quite a bit of attack for it to break even. To find the break even point, all you'd have to do is you'd have to keep raising this value. So I could actually pretty much find it if I just sub in 784 into this function and determine the percentage. Actually, it'd be pretty simple. I could maybe maybe I could do it. All right, so let me just ad hoc solve this really quick. So what I'm doing to determine how much percentage I would actually need of attack instead of 18%, how much more would I actually need to get an equivalent value of 784 to compare to um, to this? And what I get actually is 26%. Okay, so at 26%, I will get 784 instead of 18%. So I'd actually need um, another, an additional 8% on top of that 18. Um, so you can use that information to know approximately the break-even point. But the thing about this is that's only at 1,000 attack. Um, this will change over, over, over whatever your raw attack is. So it will, it will require you more attack percent um, as you move further down the line to outclass elemental bonus damage and less so as we saw here whereas you know it's a wash at the beginning where if, if they're equal they're about equal so again this just continuously reinforces the fact that elemental bonus damage is very important and the last little tidbit i wanted to, to talk about is I, I i did some like off-screen testing of physical bonus damage too um here are my just my notes as i was doing quick tests um i actually get very similar conclusions to if you compare attack versus um, let's say physical bonus damage. And I mean, I, I didn't do a nice analysis here, but just for, just for a tidbit, like this also applies to physical damage. So physical damage bonus is way better than attack percent one-to-one. -one. And then there's going to be a break even point where they, where they separate, but I need to do more testing. So that's the, that's basically it. The conclusion is, Elemental damage is good, is better than attack percent for characters that only use elemental damage. Okay, so you know it's like Fischl, usually like Shang. It'll be good to to get these two piece bonuses over, let's say, the eighteen percent attack. All right, so use this information like to your advantage. I'm not saying it's always better if you get like this crazy, you know, cup that has all these amazing crit substats that its attack percent is not better. That's not what I'm trying to tell you here. I'm just trying to show you. The comparison between these two attributes and how you can make a decision on yourself on your gear okay um hopefully that helps you and um and if you like this content please leave a like and let me know in the comments i'd love to hear your your uh your thoughts on the matter and um if there's anything else you'd like me to, to test um i'd be happy to so please drop a comment on, I'll, or any questions and i'll try to read, read them all right so thank you very much cheers guys have a great day